Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update. I'm Pat Hindle and I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude. Uh, in the last episode, we covered our May amplifier and oscillator issue. Right. So in this episode, we move on to the aerospace and defense supplement, which was newly added last year. We have two featured articles that go with the cover art here. The uh, snow and ice issue is right. what it is nicknamed. There is remote sensing radar articles. Uh, one is the design of a high power switch in the module part of it. Mm -hmm. And the other one is a uh, multi-channel ultra wide band design for radar. And they will both do imaging and measure the depth of snow or ice depending on which one you are looking at. So it's a very interesting kind of remote sensing type of application. Yeah, both of those are interesting because they touch on the technology, but also the application, like you say. Right. And so we did a special cover for this yeah. one. We have a texture on the land masses and the snow is smooth. So if you get the uh, print issue, you can check that out. Right. Sorry, not available for the app <laughs> or the uh, digital issue. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. It's coming probably. Uh, so what else do we have for technical features? So continuing on the same theme, we have a joint paper from XCOM and Keysight that talks about how do you capture data in a very complex uh, signal environment where you have a lot of signals and a lot of bandwidth to cover. And so between Keysight and XCOM, some of their equipment, they have devised a means to do that. We have a second paper from Analog Devices that covers thermal design with a lot of systems becoming more dense and higher power, certainly with the introduction of GAN technology, yeah, thermal definitely. design is a key issue. So this is an interesting paper on that. And then the third one, an application note, again, a lot of in interest on phased arrays moving now into uh, commercial applications, but from a modeling standpoint, design standpoint, how do you combine the model for the, the circuitry and the antenna? So National Instruments has a nice paper where they talk about the software platform to be able to model both together in one platform. Yeah, it's definitely a growing trend, which we'll discuss later in the yes. news. <laughs> uh, for the product features, we had Fairview Microwave uh, introduce a new family of products. They are uh, high power, high reliability electromechanical switches, and they handle powers up to 400 watts and they have uh, models up to 3 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. And then the other one's a very interesting. Peregrine is now offering Ultra CMOS for space applications because Ultra CMOS is uh, in inherently pretty uh, tolerant to radiation. Right. And they have this new partnership with E2V. So E2V will sell and market the products that Peregrine produces along with their products. So that was a new partnership that I thought was very interesting. Well, on a tech brief side, we have uh, three tech briefs, two amplifiers. Teledyne Microwave Systems has introduced a series of small, fairly rugged GAN power amplifiers that cover 100 megahertz up to 6 gigahertz in various subbands, and power levels anywhere from 15 to 40 watts. And then at the other end of the spectrum, Exodus Advanced Communications has a 24 to 31 gigahertz, it's a gas-fed amplifier that has 7 watts CW power across the band average. And then an interesting tech brief for very lightweight applications where weight is critical, Microcoax has introduced a fiber, a metallized fiber system to replace the shielding. In a, in a cable system. Because of the lightweight fiber, it can save up to 80% of the weight. Wow, that's and, significant. And it's very significant, and yet it still has 40 dB shielding up to 18 gigahertz, so quite oh. interesting. Yeah, there can be a lot of cabling in aircraft. Oh, absolutely. Adds up. Yeah. So uh, moving on to the news, I wanted to point out a trend that we just mentioned was yeah. there's a lot of trend in the industry toward AESAs, elect active electronically scanned arrays. They've been in the military and automotive radar for years, but they're really starting to make an impact in the commercial markets because of new architectures. And these new architectures are enabling very lightweight, low cost architectures that can be used in satellite, uh, commercial radar, and maybe a future of 5G cellular communications. Right. There were a few releases over the last week or two that kind of reinforced this trend. One was Echodyne Corporation. They released a metamaterial AESA module that uh, kind of is a search and detect and mm -hmm. avoid radar that is used in unmanned aerial vehicles. And then there was also Leonardo Fimicanica, and they launched a panel type surveillance radar that's AESA, and they say it's the first of its kind being used in that configuration. Yeah. And then we had uh, Bob Donahue from Anoki Wave on last week, and he talked about their 5G KA band quad core transceiver chip. So that's kind of the first one that's being centered and targeted at. 5G applications initially at 28 gigahertz, but they'll be expanding into other bands. Right. Well, speaking of 5G, the Brooklyn 5G Summit, I think we mentioned this last time, tends to be 
or is becoming a, a real place that you get a lot of breaking news on 5G. And so now that we're back from EDICON, I've been kind of going through some of the presentations that were made there, and you can find them on IEEE TV and watch them. But a couple that kind of caught my eye, Verizon, as we knew, know, have really stepped out trying to push 5G. And so they're doing a series of field trials looking at the upper frequency bands from 15 to 64 gigahertz. AT&T, likewise, is starting to do field trials. They announced they'll be doing some this summer at 15 gigahertz. And then once the uh, equipment is available, they're going to, to evaluate 28 gigahertz as well. So that's interesting. Also kind of 5G related, China, of course, being the largest mobile market. Keysight and China Mobile are expanding their collaboration for channel sounding and also massive MIMO over the air measurements. Right. And Keysight is putting in a dedicated R&D team in Beijing to support the China Mobile initiative. So some pretty interesting news there. There is a little bit of a downside on the, the standard sort of 4G cellular, ABI research is actually forecasting that that market is going to decline. It's down 2%, they claim, in this year, 2016, to about 48 billion, and it's going to decline double digits for the next several years because of the LTE build-out. So oh, okay. we've just kind of recovered from the slowdown in China, but it's not enough to keep growing significantly. Right. So moving on to events, uh, there were some significant announcements for ED Icon USA as we lead up to IMS. There were three big ones. The first one was a we announced the Technical Advisory Committee, so there's 24 experts from the industry, and so this covers our from microwave, the EMC market, and the high-speed digital market, especially relative to signal integrity and power integrity. Yes. And then we also announced the gold sponsors, so mini circuits and CST are now gold sponsors to go along with the three primary sponsors, which are Keysight, Rodian Schwartz, and National Instruments. And then finally, which I think is probably the most, most important one, is Tom Sakina of Raytheon mm. will be giving the keynote. So he'll be talking about radar systems, the development of them, and the future of these systems. And Raytheon's actually an official conference sponsor now for ED Icon USA. So a slew of news uh, leading up to IMS with that. Yeah, that's uh, gonna, turning out to be a great conference. So I'm looking forward to it and a great technical review committee that's been assembled to look through the abstracts that we've received. So it should be good. Yep, it will be. So speaking of IMS, you mentioned that. That's next week in San Francisco. I can't think of a better place for IMS to be. So between the, uh, the conference itself and the city, everyone should have a good time. Hopefully the weather will be good. Be sure and come by the Microwave Journal booth. We're number 1410, pretty much right there at the entrance. And uh, pick up your t-shirt. I have to show the design of the t-shirt this year. Uh, it's got the Golden Gate Bridge on it. It's a takeoff of our April IMS issue. And if you're a subscriber or you subscribe at the booth, you're eligible for a T-shirt. But get there early because we tend to, uh, tend to run quantity. out. That's right. And we can't print any more once they're, once they're gone. Also, Thursday morning at 8.30, we'll be doing a Frequency Matters recording in the booth. So if you're up early and want to do the Good Morning America thing, come by and uh, you can wave at us as we're talking. Yeah, just don't make us laugh. <laughs> yeah, true. Anything else to report? Uh, no, I think that wraps it up. All right. Well, we want to thank you for watching this episode of Frequency Matters. And in particular, we want to thank our sponsors, MiniCircuit, our longtime sponsor. You can find out about their products at minicircuits.com. And we also appreciate Anoki Wave sponsoring this episode. You can find out about the latest core chip that Pat mentioned earlier at anokiwave.com. Thanks, and we hope to see you at IMS or on the next episode.